The collection of high islands and atolls within the Caroline Island group of Micronesia is home to cultural traditions that have endured for thousands of years. One such form of wisdom that was no doubt necessary in ancient times was the suite of abilities required to sail across vast expanses of the Pacific Ocean on single-hold outrigger voyaging canoes. The knowledge of what to do while on the open ocean was also complemented by the detailed mental blueprints and the carving skills needed to build the handcrafted canoes that carried people and provisions safely from one island to the next when needed. In today's world, it is a wonder that such knowledge still exists given the availability of new technologies such as GPS and older ones such as outboard engines and fiberglass boats. Despite these modern conveniences though, the traditional knowledge surrounding navigation and canoe building does endure. It survives in an unbroken chain of cultural transmission between masters and apprentices that has taken place for centuries throughout the hundreds of islands of the Federated States of Micronesia. Today, it is mainly on the more remote islands of Micronesia that these precious forms of intangible cultural heritage still survive, especially on the outer islands of the states of Chuuk and Yap. This is because the process of passing customs and culture onto newer generations faced less obstacles from external pressures. It is also because on these isolated small islands, traditional navigation and canoe building remains the only option for oceanic transportation, where regular ship service, reliable fuel sources, and other options are not present. Among the Palu of Micronesia, wayfinding is a remarkable skill that draws on a fund of information held in the minds of the navigators. The stars, the ocean, the sea life, the clouds, the winds, the currents, and the waves are each variables of which Palu must master in understanding. It is understood that if you do not learn everything there is to know, then you will be risking not only your own life on the journeys, but also those of your fellow crew. Part of the training on learning how to navigate is to memorize all the stars in the night sky and the locations where they rise and fall on the eastern and western horizons. Navigators must also know the location of all the islands in the region in relation to the stars that rise above each so that they can line up their headings according to the routes from one waypoint to another, all of which they also memorize. Since it is rare that a voyage will take a straight course at all times, this skill takes much more than knowing which stars to orient their canoe under. Currents, bad weather, and all sorts of other variables make it necessary to constantly determine the canoe's changing position in relation to its route and to recalculate the heading. And so along with the stars, Palu need to learn a whole host of other types of knowledge in order to ensure that they stay on course. They are taught, therefore, how to read the waves, currents, sun, wind, and clouds in the daylight or whenever the stars are not visible. Lessons, experience, and practice therefore all combine to give the master navigators an incredibly perceptive ability to feel their way along their paths when needed. Given the enormous amount of information that must be processed at all times, it is truly remarkable how accurate non-instrument Carolinian navigation can be. Before the introduction of boats and outboard motors to the islands, various different types of canoes were commonly found throughout Micronesia. On Yap's main island group, for example, there was a canoe named a Thoab that was flatter and mainly used for transporting people and things throughout the calm canals and near shore waters. This canoe was propelled by paddling or with long bamboo poles to push it through the shallows. Then there was also the Chupin, a more ornate and decorative canoe that could be sailed or paddled and was known for its white swan neck carvings on the tips of both ends from which dangled a string of shells. There was also the Gowl, a special paddling and sailing canoe that had at both tips a carved crescent shaped feature with a bird in the middle that rotates to one of two positions an open facing position perpendicular to the canoe which indicated it was at war and a closed position in line with the canoe which communicated it was on a peaceful mission. And finally there is the Popo, a voyaging canoe built with specifications that enabled it to sail long distances across dangerous seas. A few decades ago several master Palu from the outer islands of Yap and Chuuk helped to usher in a period of revived interest in traditional navigation throughout the Pacific. This revitalization movement can be traced to a handful of master Palu, such as Hippur and Akulaman from Pulawat and Chuuk, 
and Rupunglop and Rupunglug from Sadawal and Yap, who in the late 1960s and early 1970s began to once again open ancient sea routes used by their ancestors before them. And then famously, the well-known navigator Mao Piulug from Sadawal and Yap continued the Renaissance by completing numerous voyages throughout Micronesia and even helping to reteach the ancient art of oceanic wayfinding to Hawaiians and other Polynesian cultures that had lost the traditional knowledge. Ali Haliolur from Lamatrek in Yap is one of the few master navigators still practicing and teaching the ancient art of wayfinding. He has been on numerous journeys across open ocean on various outrigger canoes, such as the famous Simeon Hokalea. He is also the latest in a long line of Palu. He is the son of a famous Pulalap, a grandmaster navigator from Sadawa and Lamatrek, the late Jesus Yuripi, who himself embarked on countless voyages throughout Micronesia. It is now up to Ali and a very small group of remaining master navigators, including Euripi's last remaining brother, Rapwi, to continue to initiate future generations of worthy navigators who are willing to undergo the intense training needed to captain sailing canoes across the dangerous open ocean without the use of modern instruments. Knowledge holders such as Ali recognize that newer generations are not naturally drawn to learn this ancient wisdom for various reasons. As such, he and others are developing innovative new ways to teach and transmit the less culturally sensitive elements of this valuable knowledge. Ali, for example, has been designing more conventional teaching methods to teach traditional navigation on the main islands of Yap. This has even led to two recent Po ceremonies to initiate new navigators. One such ceremony is seen here. Ali has also been working with the local community colleges in the FSM to create courses on the basics of traditional navigation, and has even shared his knowledge publicly online with the nonprofit organization Pacifica Renaissance. And one of Ali's recent apprentices, Larry Ragatai, has also been teaching traditional navigation skills to students in Guam. Along with his wife, Regina, Larry manages Wage, a nonprofit organization supporting navigation, canoe building, and many other cultural heritage activities from Yap's outer islands. While various types of canoes continue to be built on the more remote islands throughout the FSM, until just recently, it was only the Popo that could still be found on the main islands of Yap. In 2013, however, Chief Thargnon resurrected the Chugpin by using historical pictures to complement the little knowledge still heard in the oral histories about their design. It was the first time in decades that a Chugpin sailed the waters of Yap and Chief Thargon hopes to one day also revive the Thowab and the Gawal as well, with the help of the Yapis Traditional Navigation Society. As he continues to demonstrate and teach to a small group of apprentices, Chief Thargon and the Yapis Traditional Navigation Society have taken the torch to carry forward a tradition of canoe building that was almost lost completely on the main islands of Yap, but is now seeing a resurgence through efforts such as the annual Yapis Canoe Festival. What all these knowledge holders have in common is the recognition of the dangers of these traditions being lost forever and an understanding of the need to find new ways to teach their wisdom to newer generations. Larry Ragatal often uses a navigational metaphor to help others understand the importance and necessity in continuing to teach and learn the traditional knowledge from the islands. He points out that cultural heritage preservation is vital to a society's development and this awareness can be cultivated by using an analogy to sailing under the stars. As Larry notes, quote, before losing sight of the land of origin, the navigator must look back to know which star it will disappear under so he can determine the course for the land of destination. It is a critical celestial navigation reference. And finally, as he further makes clear when speaking about how critical cultural preservation is, he says, quote, in order for us to move forward, we must know from where we came. Thus, our culture, which is really our identity, is key for us to move forward." Unquote. Keeping an eye on their past, today's Yappies navigators and canoe builders are helping to steer a course to a better tomorrow. <laughs>